The liver is arguably the most hardworking organ in the body, with over 500 vital functions to fulfill. One of its most important roles is the detoxification of harmful substances. And given that we are continuously exposed to toxins through the air we breathe, food we eat, water we drink, it is no surprise that this is one organ that can become overworked. But can this organ be regenerated? And if so, how can that process be supported? My name is Bobby Qureshi, I'm a naturopath, I'm an osteopath, and I'm also the Director of Education for the College of Naturopathic Medicine. And in this video, we're going to find out. So, the liver is the second largest organ in the body after the skin, and is located in the right upper abdomen. The average adult liver weighs 1.5 kilograms, and 90% of this crucial organ is made up of specialized cells called hepatocytes. Hepato comes from the Greek word for liver, and site means cell. These wonderful cells are like little factories that perform all of the liver's 500 plus functions. So, what are some of the most important functions of the liver? The liver receives a constant supply of blood from the digestive organs via a blood vessel called the portal vein. Every single substance absorbed from your gut travels down this vein and we rely on the liver to act almost like a gateway into the rest of your body. Hence why the word portal is a good choice. The liver processes these substances, removes anything harmful, stores nutrients, and allows harmless substances through into our main circulation. As I already mentioned, the liver is the body's main detoxifying organ and it is well positioned to perform this role given that almost one and a half liters of blood passes through the liver every single minute. A toxin is defined as any substance that can disturb bodily processes and cause harm. The liver has the crucial job of modifying these toxins so that they are rendered excretable into the feces or the urine. The analogy I would give for this is to imagine your old garden shed as a toxin. To remove this shed from your garden, you first need to break it down into smaller pieces before then joining the bits of the shed together into a pile to enable you to carry them out. The main steps I just mentioned of breaking the toxin down and then joining it together are very heavily nutrient dependent processes. This means that if your body doesn't have the required nutrients to fuel these reactions, your liver will accumulate toxins and this can be extremely harmful. What we so often find in clinic is that people are flooding their liver with so many toxins whilst not getting the required nutrients from their diet to be able to cope. The liver also breaks down hormones and this is key because if the liver is sluggish in its activity, we might not break down sufficient amounts of hormones that need clearing from the body. So why do we need to break down hormones? Well, if I use the example of the sex hormone estrogen, if underperforming, the liver can contribute to high levels of estrogen in circulation. And this is a huge problem because excess estrogen is linked to a variety of diseases, ranging from fibroids, and endometriosis to breast cancer. In other words, every body system, such as the cardiovascular system, hormone system, skin, and so on, depends on healthy liver function. So the effects of a poorly functioning liver can be felt all over the body. So what are the most harmful substances to the liver? This brings us back to toxins, and let's start with alcohol. Long-term alcohol consumption is highly damaging for those tiny liver factories I mentioned earlier, which are called hepatocytes. Over time, fat can deposit in the liver, the organ can become inflamed, and scar tissue can replace healthy liver tissue. Pharmaceutical drugs can also demand a lot of the liver. For example, paracetamol, which is one of the most extensively used painkillers in the world, depletes the liver of its highly protective antioxidant called glutathione. Studies have shown that in the presence of paracetamol, the concentration of glutathione can decrease by as much as 80 to 90%. The liver also deals with environmental toxins 
which can range from chemical toxins in plastic packaging, pesticides in food, and pollutants in the air, to the heavy metals found in some dental fillings, larger fish, and kitchenware. There are now more than 85,000 environmental chemicals known to be in existence. No wonder our livers are struggling. And finally, when our bowel motions are sluggish, gut bacteria are out of balance, or when the intestinal lining becomes permeable, the toxins in our gut destined for the outside world can be absorbed and sent to the liver. This is why good gut health is so crucial for good liver health. Despite these causes being so problematic for the liver, there is good news. The liver is often regarded as the most resilient organ in the body and has an exceptional capacity to regenerate. Studies have shown that in, even in some cases where the liver has been acutely damaged from pharmaceutical drug abuse, 50% of the liver can completely regenerate in as little as 30 days. Other research has shown that the liver can regrow to a normal size even after up to 90% of it has been removed. But the liver isn't invincible, and this robust organ will only regenerate when given the right conditions. So how can we create the optimal environment to support the health of the liver? Well, Whilst the liver is one of the most complex organs in the body, supporting it naturally involves a simple principle of taking out the toxins and adding nutrients in. So yes, we can regenerate our liver, but the question becomes, how do we do that? Remove the toxins. You might eat really well, supplement great products and stay active, but if your liver is being overwhelmed with toxins, these things won't do you too much good. Cutting out alcohol will quickly help the liver to regenerate damaged tissue. Why not try healthy alternatives such as kombucha, a fermented sparkling drink that actually provides many health benefits. Also remove junk foods, because ultimately if you eat junk, your health will be junk. If you eat healthy, you will be healthy. It's that simple. By instead focusing on real whole foods that are organic, it will mean less pesticides and less herbicides for your liver to deal with. I also recommend avoiding conventional meat and dairy products, which often contain antibiotic residues and other toxins. Instead, opt for grass-fed and organic meats and organic raw dairy where applicable. To further reduce toxin exposure in your home, consider using glass rather than plastic in order to avoid chemicals such as BPA. Use baking paper rather than aluminium foil to avoid consuming this harmful heavy metal. Use a good quality water filter to reduce the chemical residues such as fluoride in normal tap water. Use natural cosmetic products rather than the toxic compounds found in common cosmetics and include air purifying plants in your home, such as peace lily, to remove pollutants from the air. Increase your antioxidants. Going back to my shed analogy from earlier, when the liver is working away on toxins, it creates a bit of a mess. This mess could cause oxidative damage if very volatile substances are not neutralized. This is where antioxidants come in. These are molecules that stop oxidative damage, and in terms of my analogy, help to clear up the mess. The liver's main antioxidant, glutathione, requires the mineral selenium to operate effectively. Where do we find a huge abundance of selenium? Brazil nuts. In fact, one single Brazil nut contains almost twice the recommended daily intake of selenium, so a little bit will go a long way. Other liver protective antioxidants include vitamin C, which is abundant in foods such as peppers, currants, berries, and citrus fruits, and vitamin E, which is found in sunflower seeds, almonds, avocado, and spinach. Eat cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are also known as brassicas and include foods such as broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. This powerhouse family are rich in a plant nutrient called glucosinolates. These compounds help the liver in both of its phases of detoxification, 
i.e. the breaking down of the shed and its removal from the garden. The effects from eating cruciferous vegetables can be seen for up to two weeks after eating these amazing foods. And studies have shown us that glucosinolates can aid with the detoxification of alcohol, caffeine, and other toxins. What is particularly special about the effects of these glucosinolates is that they also help to support the breakdown of estrogen. In my naturopathic clinic, I am constantly dealing with cases of excess estrogen. And I find that cruciferous vegetables are truly one of the most effective means of lowering levels of this very potent, powerful hormone. On a practical note, cooking cruciferous vegetables higher than 140 degrees Celsius for more than just a few minutes results in a loss of glucosinolates. And around 90% of glucosinolates are lost when boiling. However, steaming allows for a high retention of these powerful compounds, and so is the preferable cooking method. Alternatively, you can, of course, eat them raw. Consume these foods on a daily basis and try rotating them to also give your gut bacteria plenty of diversity. Use liver-supporting herbs. Milk thistle is the best all-round liver herb that has a long history of use. Milk thistle contains powerful compounds called silymarin, which exert its powerful effects. This herb counteracts damage to and aids the regeneration of hepatocytes, those mini liver factories. It can protect from alcohol and drug-induced damage and boost the liver's own antioxidants, including the all-important glutathione. Milk thistle truly is the king of detoxifying herbs and is arguably the most effective natural means of assisting liver regeneration. Next up is turmeric. This Ayurvedic spice is well known for its anti-inflammatory actions, but it is also an excellent detoxifier. Its main compound, curcumin, has been shown to increase levels of antioxidants in the liver and can also assist in the detoxification of heavy metals. Aim to include one tablespoon or around a gram of turmeric in your diet every day to reap its benefits. And to maximize its absorption, ensure that it's consumed with plenty of healthy fats and black pepper. And finally, dandelion. And yes, this is the plant that most people try and kill with weed killer. Oh, how detached from nature we are. It is mostly the root of the plant that we use because this has the strongest effects on the liver. And it is regarded in herbal medicine as a liver dredger. In simple terms, this means that it scrapes out the debris from the liver. Dandelion also promotes the release of bile, a substance produced by the liver that contains its breakdown products. Dandelion encourages its movement into the intestines whilst also promoting intestinal contractions to ensure that these waste products are eliminated. In terms of how to use this plant, you can simmer the dried root in a pan of boiling water for about 10 to 15 minutes on the basis of using one to two teaspoons of the herb per cup, and then aim to drink one to two cups per day. So can the liver be regenerated? Absolutely, but only when given the right conditions. And how can we optimize those conditions? Remove the toxins, eat plenty of antioxidant-rich foods, consume cruciferous vegetables daily, and use our amazing liver-supporting herbs. So give these tips a try to improve the health of your liver today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be updated on new weekly videos. If you have any suggestions of topics you would like us to discuss or cover, please leave us a comment and I'll see you in the next episode.